Welcome back. Tom Hartman here with you. And uh, some very interesting statistics here. Uh, this is from a piece by C.J. Whirlman in, uh, in Alternate.org, published on March 22nd of this year. Uh, C.J. says, of those aged 18 to 35, 3 out of 10, 30%, say they are not affiliated with any religion at all, while only half are absolutely certain a God exists. This is the highest level of religious disaffiliation for any generation in the past uh, quarter century. Uh, the, uh, the argument that I think C.J. Worldman is making is that religion evolved as, a, as, a, as an attempt to make sense of a world that people didn't understand. Why is that lightning strike coming out of the sky? Oh, it must be because Thor is banging his hammer up there. And then later it became, okay, you know, Thor doesn't make so much sense, so maybe it's, uh, you know, just, you know, God is angry. And then, you know, that didn't make sense. So it's, uh, but we still, you know, you find the reporter sticking to the microphone in somebody's face after the hurricane came through and took out their neighbor's trailer park. And, oh, you know, I'm so glad God saved me. Well, what about your neighbor? Your neighbor's dead. Well, you know, let's not talk about that. So anyhow, it seems that as people are more and more relying on science, number one, they are relying less and less on a religion. And number two, that religion, and we certainly saw this during the Middle Ages uh, when the Catholic Church took over most of Europe, that, and we see this in other parts of the world as well, with the Taliban, for example, in Afghanistan and Pakistan, that religion becomes an instrument of control. And people push back on control and say, no, thank you, I'm not going to do that just because you said so, because you said God told you to. And so these two factors, people pushing back and, and the, 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 the right wing fundamentalists in the United States, even reaching out to take control of a political party and the affiliation between the Republican Party and the right wing Christians has turned off a lot of people just to the idea of religion, which I think is frankly kind of sad. I think that religion has a lot to offer people. Um, but anyhow, that that that's on the table. And so I, I wanted to ask Brian Fisher his thoughts on this. He's the host of Focal Point Radio on uh, on uh, AFR Talk. He's the Director of Issues Analysis for Government and Public Policy at the American Family Association, a, a f- essentially fundamentally Christian organization. Do I have all that right, Brian? <laughs> well, you know, I'm looking at this piece by C.J. Worleman. This must be enormously discouraging to atheists because after 100 years of brainwashing, they've only convinced 30% of young Americans not to affiliate with Christian denomination. That must be terribly discouraging for them. But it's the trend. It is the trend. The trend is people disaffiliating with religions and self-identifying as agnostics or atheists. Well, of course, the problem is 18 to 35-year-old people are not going to remain 18 to 35 forever. They're going to grow up and develop a mature hunger for God. How do you know that? Because it happens all the time. I saw it when I was a pastor. I can't tell you how many people, Tom came to faith when they became parents, and all of a sudden they got serious about life and about God, wound up in my church. Happens all the time. So this is sort of like what Winston Churchill Churchill said about conservatives. That you're liberal when you're young, and when you get older and wealthier, you become conservative. Uh, Yeah, something like that. People grow up, and they mature, and they outgrow some of their childish ideas about life and about God. For instance, that religion evolved. Well, certain religions may have evolved, but Christianity didn't evolve. It is a revealed religion. God himself revealed the essence of Christianity. But there was a, you know, there was a fundamental schism between the Pauline church and the Jesus church in the first hundred years. The, you know, Jesus' disciples, that church did not survive. Uh, no, Paul actually, was not among them. Paul, no, you know. There was no schism whatsoever. In fact, Paul made it very clear that the gospel that he preached was a gospel that he received from Jesus himself. There's no schism. Who there. he never met physically on this earth. Oh, yes, he did. He said, the gospel I preached, I received through a revelation of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ himself manifested himself to me and taught me the gospel. Somebody saying, you know, God talked to me. Well, that makes it a revealed religion, not an evolved religion. Okay. Um, What are evolved religions? Well, you could look at Islam. You could Islam is, uh, you know, I mean, they, they depend on the same scripture as Christianity by and large. No, they depend on the Quran. They do not depend well, on the Well, they also Bible. they also cite the Old Testament and the New Testament. Yeah, but they don't believe that Jesus was God. There's a fundamental difference between They believe Islam he was one of the prophets. No, but they don't believe he was God. In fact, they they'll, they'll stone you to death if you say that Jesus was God in a Muslim country. There's a big difference there between the two faiths. Because this was revealed to Muhammad, right? Well, yeah, that's what he claimed. 
Okay, so, so, some, so, so somebody, so, what, that mean, what that means. So some, Islam is a revealed religion as well. Well, that's what they claim. That means somebody's right and right. somebody's wrong. Either the Muslims are right and we're wrong, or we are right and the Muslims are wrong. What if everybody's wrong? What if there is no, you know, uh, Bronze Age thunder god who, who kills people when he gets well, upset with them? Well, I guess if and is going to torture you for the rest of your life if you're not if, if you don't do what he says. I guess if everybody's wrong, Tom, then you're just as wrong as the rest of us. Well, I'm not asserting anything. I'm asking a question. I, you know, it's it it. Uh, do you do you feel, Brian, that you're that you're hedging your bets or that? In fact, I I shouldn't even personalize this. Do you think that many of the people who come to church on Sundays? do so to hedge their bets or do they do so because they actually get some value out of religion? And if it's the latter, and I'm guessing you're going to say it is, what is it that they get? Well, philosopher Blaise Pascal, I think it was, or maybe it was Augustine, said that there is a God-shaped vacuum in the heart of every single human being. That means you as well as me, Tom, and people look for God. The only thing that will fill that vacuum is God, and that's why they go to church. And when they find God, that vacuum is filled, and so, yes, it's very satisfying to them. Well, yeah, you know, I don't, in principle, I don't disagree with that, although, uh, oh, what was his name? The guy who used to, Carl Sagan used to talk about how, you know, the, what did that for him was looking through a telescope. I mean, isn't there, isn't there a whole variety of ways that people can experience the, you know, what William Blake called the, the, the ecstatic experience, the religious experience? Oh, you know, sure. The piercing of the veil without uh, a revealed religion, without, you know, somebody thousands of years ago having told somebody else that God talked to them, and now here we are 2,000 years later dancing to that tune? Well, Jesus was very clear that no one comes to the Father except through me. So there may be other ways that people pursue the numinous or whatever you want to call it, uh, but there's only one true way to the Father, that's through Jesus Christ. But what if, if he some, was speaking if, not literally of him as a personality? What if he was saying, but by this technique or this, <laughs> this, you know, this presence? Well, he didn't give us that option, Tom. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Yeah. So somebody's got a problem with that. Their problem's not with me. Their problem is with Jesus himself, and or, I suggest they take it up with him. Yeah, or whoever edited that particular biblical scripture. Well, there's no evidence that that happened. There's no evidence that the Bible's been edited over the years? None. You're, you're not serious. Right. No, there are, there are 5,280 manuscript copies of the New Testament that agree in every major particular down to the detail. So that's just a myth that somebody tampered with it or came along later and monkeyed with it. Just a myth. There's absolutely no historical foundation to that theory whatsoever. Wow. Uh, are you familiar with the work of uh, Mr. Funk and, and Elaine, Elaine Pagels and, you know, some of these, the, the Jesus Project, where they went through the New Testament and figured out, you know, what did Jesus actually probably say and not <laughs> they just, probably say? Have, they you, just, have you read any of that stuff? Oh, sure. Yeah, they just made stuff up. They have absolutely no documentary evidence for their theories whatsoever. But there are no None. original versions of any of that stuff. I mean, the oldest original version of anything is, is a fragment of, of the Gospel of Mark that, that's from the 3rd century. Well, if there was anything to their theory, Tom, you would expect to find somewhere in some ancient cave or whatever, some document that would verify what they say. There is none. Zero, zip, they do not exist. Interesting. Do you think that, that by reaching out to uh, control politics or participate in politics that Christians are hurting themselves? Absolutely not. You know, the Bible teaches us that the truth claims of God are true for all people at all times, in all places. You know, and it's silly to accuse us of wanting a theocracy when all we're seeking to do is get people involved voluntarily in the political process so it's your, to your... choose leaders who reflect their values. That's not theocracy, that's democracy. Okay. Brian Fisher, good talking with you, Brian. Thank you, Tom. Uh, AFA.net, by the way, is his website.